Behind this next door lies a very special hell. It is called dystopia the hell of the atheist. You see, just as the fear of the literal hell is used to frighten the theist into submission, so too are dystopian fantasies used to frighten the secular mind. Don't believe me? Well, listen and learn the truth about the trouble with jokes. It all started with a joke that nobody really got. In light of what developed afterwards, it doesn't particularly matter whether or not it was actually funny. For, you see, everybody was so deathly afraid of being perceived as not intelligent enough to understand this historic slice of comedy that they all just went ahead and laughed with it anyways. The world changed that day and they kept on laughing. The farce was praised far and wide until its sheer hilarity was accepted as common knowledge. It was many years after the telling of this joke and perhaps as an indirect result of it that Ms. Benson found herself walking nervously towards the president's office. Secretly she wished that if she just took a little too long to reach her destination that her employer would decide that her presence was not required after all. But her wishing ended up being in vain. She found Madam President sitting calmly behind her desk. The lady in charge was always dressed impeccably with her silver hair put up in a neat little bun, ready to look good for hundreds of cameras that were built into the very room. One of them flashed as Ms. Benson stepped through the door. The picture that it took would be sent instantly to various digital media outlets, coupled with a brief, automatically generated description that was certain to fit the president's desired public image. You wanted to see me, ma'am? Ms. Benson asked softly. Yes. The president answered with a smile. Another camera flash captured that smile for the public to see, painting her as a friendly and relatable individual. I just read the funniest joke. The lady in charge continued. And I absolutely had to share it with someone. Ms. Benson gritted her teeth. With all due respect, ma'am. She said. I was in the middle of some very important silence the president snapped the cameras did not flash as she slammed her fist on the desk angrily i am giving you a direct order to listen to this joke and to find it highly amusing is that clear yes miss benson replied anxiously giggles are on standby the president's eyes narrowed coldly no guffaws she asked. I'll try, ma'am. The lady in charge leaned back in her chair. It goes like this. A hundred years ago there were these birds called chickens. Have you heard of them? Yes. I hear they were delicious breaded and deep fried. Yum, that does sound good. Pity they went extinct. Well, if you're interested. Ms. Benson said. One of the cameras snapped a picture as she leaned in close to her employer. I know this one little place in Sector 9. The chef there has an ancient recipe he calls tofu. I looked it up. It used to be sold in stores and the old packages say that it tastes exactly like chicken. Really? I'll have to get the address off of you. I bet he doesn't make it as well as our chefs could though does he? Oh, of course not. I didn't think so. I've noticed that products from the outside are always inferior to ours. I think it's because people in other castes put more value on the baser ideals than we do. You can see it in all their literature. It's always so physical, vulgar even. They're just not open to the higher, intellectual concepts like we are. The cameras flashed again. No doubt, the pictures they produced would be accompanied by the description, 
president discusses advanced literary theory. Uh, ma'am? What about the joke? Oh yes, the joke. Now where was I? Chickens. Of course, chickens. There was this one chicken. She started giggling uncontrollably. The cameras flashed like strobes as her laughter escalated wildly. He crossed the road. Can you guess why? I couldn't possibly imagine. To get to the other side. The president said. Another torrent of mad laughter followed, coupled with more flashes from the cameras, until she was finally able to calm herself. You see, the brilliance of this joke is in its simplicity. It sets you up to think that the chicken has some great, philosophical reason for crossing the road. And then it gives you the answer that you can't believe was in front of your face the entire time. It's a masterpiece, ma'am," Ms. Benson said. The president gave her a suspicious look. So why aren't you laughing, then? Ms. Benson froze in terror. I'm laughing on the inside. The cameras did nothing as Madam President rose from her seat. I don't suppose you could laugh a little more on the outside, could you? It's not that you didn't tell it well. You have precisely 10 seconds to break into hysterical fits of laughter before I have you shot for treason. 9, 8, 7. Ms. Benson forced a snicker. That snicker grew into a giggle, then into uncontrollable snorting. The cameras flashed again, capturing the power of the president's wit for all to see. Tears streaked down the poor woman's cheeks as she laughed to save her life. See, there's nothing like a good joke to show the public that, even though I'm the president, I'm still human and able to laugh just like they do. You've done good work today, Ms. Benson. You're dismissed. Ms. Benson wiped the tears from her eyes and headed for the door. Do you know any good jokes? Yes, I do. One of them even got elected. She had not meant to say it. The words just slipped out. The cameras did not flash as murder filled the president's face. Ms. Benson knew that she had just signed her own death warrant. The lady in charge composed herself eerily and gave her inferior a farewell salute. That will be all. Ms. Benson left the president's office unsure of her fate. Unsure if she would live to see another day. That's the trouble with jokes. No matter how much the times may change, they always seem to be the ones in charge. Well, my lovely little sinners, did this story hold any special insight for you? Or was it more fearmongering like every other piece of dystopian fiction? Once again, you decide.